So what is a stomach ulcer? It's basically a breakdown of the tissues. Now let me give you a scenario here. It was probably about maybe 20 years ago, a couple of Australian doctors in Western Australia discovered that Helicobacter pylori caused stomach ulcers. You've heard of, heard of that theory. They even put Helicobacter pylori bacteria into some people's stomach and, and got stomach ulcers. So we had a man do our program from South Africa and he and his wife came. He was not interested in being at our retreat, but his wife had paid the full amount, so he came. I said to him, do you drink water? Yeah, uh, two litres a day. I said, do you want any medication? He said, yes, I'm on a different antibiotic every month to kill the Helicobacter pylori in my stomach because I have had stomach problems for 25 years. I've how long have you been on this program? He said four months. And guess what? It's still there and he's still got the stomach pain. Hello students. Have you ever considered the impact of fizzy drinks on your health? Are they just loaded with sugar or could they offer any health benefits? From fizzy drinks to juices, protein shakes and natural fruit nectars, the list of beverages shaped by scientific opinions seems never ending. With so much conflicting advice on diets, choosing what to drink can be overwhelming. So which simple beverage are we overlooking in our daily routine? How does this one drink bring about incredible changes in our bodies? What does this miracle drink do for us? Let's explore the details. Nearly 41 years ago, two doctors in Western Australia made an extraordinary discovery. The bacterium Helicobacter pylori is the cause of stomach ulcers this bacterium erodes the stomach's protective lining, leading to damage. Painful gastric fluid then comes into contact with the wound created by the damaged tissues. Barbara O'Neill, a strong advocate of natural remedies and a proponent of the body's innate healing powers, has conducted groundbreaking research on treating stomach ulcers. With her extensive experience in herbal medicine, she has addressed not only ulcers, but also made other significant diagnoses, providing remedies for conditions like cancer, gut health issues, hair problems, and immune system support. It can bring feeling into feet that nothing else will do. Remember what cayenne pepper does? What I like to do is I like to understand what the actives are in the herb and then you know to apply it. And it's number one most important active is it moves blood. So it's gonna pull blood to the area when you've got that on the bottom of the feet. So when you take it off in the morning, you just wipe it with a, a wet wash. A man from South Africa once joined Barbara O'Neill's program which specialized in studying treatments for stomach ulcer. Though initially hesitant, he joined because his wife paid for the program on his behalf. The patient, who appeared to be around 55 to 57 years old, was initially disengaged and did not respond well to Barbara's questions. For him, this was just another program in his 25-year struggle with painful stomach ulcer. When asked about his water intake, he reported drinking about two liters a day. He also revealed that for the last 25 years, he had been taking a different antibiotic every month to try to eliminate Helicobacter pylori from his stomach. Despite being on this medication for the past four months, he hadn't seen any improvement in his condition or relief from the pain. The bacterium and the pain remained. After listening to Barbara's lecture on the body's natural ability to heal itself and the importance of supporting this process, the patient and his wife approached Barbara. As mentioned, they were both on medication, but Barbara's proposed solution resonated with them. The man expressed a willingness to try Barbara's new approach. After all the previous traditional and modern treatments had failed to cure his ulcers, Barbara's advice made more sense to him. He was advised to switch to herbal remedies, as his current medications had not been effective. Barbara recommended the herb Slippery Elm, known for its gut-soothing properties. What happened to him may surprise you as we continue through the video. The surprising cause, dehydration can trigger multiple problems in the body. According to Barbara, our body struggles to perform basic functions without sufficient water. Now, to put an end to the myths surrounding the causes of ulcer, dehydration is the primary culprit. As you can see, one of the first areas where water is depleted during dehydration is the stomach lining. This water deficiency can result in a thinner stomach lining, 
in dehydrated individuals, which ultimately weakens the stomach tissue. But one of the first places that water is taken from in dehydration is the lining of the stomach. And so when someone is dehydrated, they can have a very thin stomach lining. According to Barbara, when the stomach lining weakens, it results in a reduced production of sodium bicarbonate, which typically shields the lining from the corrosive effects of stomach acid. Without this protective barrier, the stomach acid can start to erode the lining, damaging the tissues. This triggers the body's microorganisms to shift roles and act as cleanup agents. And when there's a very thin stomach lining, there's no sodium bicarbonate in there, and so the stomach acid can easily start to eat its way through. The microorganisms in the stomach, including Helicobacter pylori, are often blamed as the primary cause of stomach ulcers. However, Barbara stresses that dehydration is the real culprit, with the bacteria playing a role in the ulcer's development. When the stomach lining is weakened by dehydration, it becomes vulnerable to damage, prompting an overgrowth of Helicobacter pylori as they try to repair the compromised tissue. Dehydration not only affects the stomach lining, but also impacts digestion and nutrient absorption, leading to a host of other health issues. Barbara strongly advocates for drinking sufficient water and advises that the best time to drink water is between meals. Consuming water during meals can be detrimental to digestion and gut health as it dilutes stomach acid, which is necessary for efficiently breaking down proteins. Without a properly acidic stomach environment, food takes much longer to digest, disrupting normal digestive processes and potentially leading to other gut-related conditions, including food poisoning and ulcer. The miracle solution revealed. The miracle solution we've been referring to is water. It plays a crucial role in preventing a variety of health issues and is the only essential drink that the human body truly needs to survive. All the other beverages we discussed earlier are not essential to our bodies. According to Barbara, to maintain a strong acidic environment in the stomach. It's advisable to stop drinking water at least half an hour before meals, ensuring the stomach acid remains potent enough for digestion. Barbara suggests resuming water consumption. If necessary, about one and a half to two hours after eating. You should stop drinking half an hour before a meal and resume drinking about an hour and a half after a meal. That is ideal. Now, if someone's thirsty after the meal, by all means have a mouthful. Starting your meal in a well-hydrated state helps you avoid the need for water during meals. This approach allows the stomach to maintain an optimal acidic environment for effective digestion. The sensation of hunger two hours after eating is often just your body's need for water, as it can't always differentiate between hunger and thirst. Barber suggests drinking a glass of water before eating if you feel hungry soon after a meal. If you feel thirsty after a meal, a small amount of water to quench your thirst won't dilute stomach acid significantly. Still, the best practice is to begin your meal well hydrated to prevent issues later on. Timing your water intake is essential as this practice addresses dehydration, the root cause of stomach ulcers which antibiotics cannot treat. By ensuring proper hydration at the right times, you can enhance your digestion, stomach health, and gut function, protecting the stomach lining and preventing tissue erosion. Barbara O'Neill highlights the wide-ranging benefits of Slippery Elm, the herb she recommended to the South African man who had endured a stomach ulcer for 25 years. Slippery Elm is beneficial both internally and externally due to its powerful healing properties when mixed with water it transforms into a jelly-like, slime-like substance. This quality makes it extremely soothing, offering protective effects to various body parts. Slippery Elm can be used externally as a drawer and it can be used internally. It goes like a soft jelly when you put it with water. It almost is a bit like, dare I say, mucus. When taken orally, Slippery Elm provides a soothing and protective coating to the entire gastrointestinal tract including the stomach lining. It is especially effective in relieving sore throats and easing the pain from stomach ulcers. For those suffering from stomach ulcer, Slippery Elm serves as a potent natural remedy, promoting healing 
controlling the overgrowth of Helicobacter pylori and quickly alleviating the pain and discomfort associated with ulcers. When you take it by mouth, it coats and soothes the whole of the gastrointestinal tract. It'll soothe a sore throat. It'll soothe ulcerated esophagus. Barber highlights that slippery elm soothing effects go beyond the stomach, extending into the small intestine and colon. This makes it particularly beneficial for treating conditions such as Crohn's disease and irritable bowel syndrome. Slippery Elm's herbal properties serve as a mild stimulant, aiding the body's healing process from the throat all the way through the gastrointestinal tract. It will heal a stomach ulcer. Let's go further down into the small intestine and into the colon. It'll heal Crohn's disease, it'll heal irritable bowel. Additionally, this versatile herb can be used externally as a drawing agent to soothe and heal irritation from wounds, burns, and various skin issues. It also helps reduce inflammation and promotes healing when applied to the skin. Barbara highlights that the multifaceted uses of Slippery Elm make it an essential addition to any natural remedy, particularly for those with gastrointestinal problems. With its soothing, protective, and healing properties, it supports overall digestive health and provides relief from stomach ulcers and numerous other ailments. I have to tell you the story of Roy, because this is quite remarkable. He had a very sore stomach. He said, I've tried everything to heal my stomach and, and nothing helps. He said, I went to the doctor and they gave me Nexium to slow down the stomach acid. He said, it didn't help, so then they sent me to the psychiatrist. So I said, stay there. I mixed up some slippery on with water. I said, take this. He said, oh, <laughs> that's taken the pain out somewhat. The turning to our story from the video, Barbara successfully healed the South African patient and his wife. After learning about the benefits of Slippery Elm, it's clear how this happened. Just two days after consuming Slippery Elm for the first time, the patient returned to Barbara, astonished by the relief he experienced. He reported that for the first time in 25 years, he felt no pain or discomfort in his stomach. It seemed as if the first dose of Slippery Elm had erased all his pain. The patient, initially skeptical after trying everything to cure his ulcer and pain, finally found something he could trust. This dramatic improvement emphasizes the power of natural remedies and the body's capacity to heal when properly supported. Even when modern treatments failed, Slippery Elm not only soothed his stomach lining, but also started the healing process that antibiotics couldn't trigger. This patient's experience highlights the importance of considering natural resources for treatment rather than relying on ineffective methods. The swift improvement he experienced can be credited to the unique properties of Slippery Elm. With its soothing, protective, and healing abilities, it may have quickly acted on the damaged stomach tissue, coating and aiding in the repair of the affected area. Every day, I gave him a big teaspoon of Slippery Elm in a big cup of water. Have to mix it quickly and throw it down because it can go quite thick and some people are a bit challenged by the thickness of it. But just imagine what that's doing inside. Its anti-inflammatory and natural healing properties may have also targeted the bacteria in the damaged area of the stomach, providing relief from the persistent pain. According to Barbara, proper hydration is vital for overall health and offers long-term benefits that extend far beyond quenching thirst. Sufficient water intake greatly enhances digestive health and helps address a variety of other health concerns. Hydration is crucial in maintaining a healthy stomach lining, keeping it thick and protective. Water also helps soothe irritated tissues throughout the gastrointestinal tract, relieving symptoms of acid reflux, gastritis, and inflammatory bowel diseases. Barbara stresses that hydration is not just about consuming large quantities of water, but also about drinking it at the right time. We should stop drinking half an hour before the meal, and that means that we've got a nice acid environment, and then resume drinking one and a half hours to two hours after the meal. For instance, drinking water between meals rather than during meals prevents the dilution of stomach acid, which is crucial for effective digestion. Staying properly hydrated also aids the body in managing stress and inflammation. If you've reached this point, don't forget to explore the other videos on the channel.